How do we play the violin without a shoulder rest? The first thing we want to make sure works well without shoulder rest is that we have a good chin rest for our body. A lot of people think that playing without shoulder rest is just not for them because their neck ends up being very compressed like this and so they put in a bunch of space with the shoulder rest and then it feels better. And yes, that, that's a much better idea to play with shoulder rest than have your neck very compressed. However, we can also get a higher chin rest. <laughs> and, and actually, if you find a good setup without shoulder rest, you'll actually then be able to find a better setup with shoulder rest if you decide to still play with a shoulder rest. So the, the first thing is we want to put the violin on the collarbone this bone that sticks out <laughs> and creates a ledge. So we, we place the violin on that bone and then we want to be able to just nod a little bit and we want our jawbone to meet the chin rest. If, if we find that we're going way down before the, the jaw meets the chin rest, we need a higher chin rest. Or we could actually have a too high chin rest where if, we're, if our body is neutral, we have a good position of our neck, just however we feel the most comfortable, and then we actually have to raise the chin to fit the violin in. That's also not, not great for the body. So ideally, we want a chin rest where if we feel very in alignment, the head balancing on top of the spine, we place the violin on the collarbone, we should just have to nod a little bit to meet the jaw with the chin rest. And the reason why we want to nod at least a little bit is sometimes we need a little bit of pressure, a little bit of nod into the instrument to secure the violin. And if if all the space is, is already filled before we nod at all, we'll have to work these neck muscles more to secure the instrument. So if we just have to nod a little bit, that will give us enough stability. We'll feel comfortable. Our spine our, and our neck will feel uh, comfortable. It won't feel compressed. and with very little effort from the neck, we'll be able to secure the instrument. So then, once we have this, a good exercise to do is to see if we can just nod a little bit and then move the, the hand up and down like this. You can, you can try it without the thumb or with the thumb as well, but of course, we'll have some friction here and we want to feel that we can move up and down without working our neck much. We want to be able to shift uh, without much difficulty. Another thing we have to think about when we're playing without shoulder rest is how, how are we going to lift the violin up? Because if we're playing with shoulder rest, of course, we can help with this area to lift the violin. We don't necessarily have to help with the hand, but if you're playing without a shoulder rest, you definitely need to help with the hand. How I play is without any padding on my shoulder, so there's absolutely no help from the shoulder lifting the violin up. And so, of course, I, I need to work this, this left arm. If you use a pad, It'll be kind of like a combination. You have some help, like a shoulder rest, yet you'll still help with the hand to hold the violin up. So how to hold up the violin with the left hand? You want to make sure your shoulder is not forward. You want to make sure with your posture in general, your chest is open. The reason for that is if we have stability 
shoulder stability. Uh, we have some strength in those muscles in, uh, under the shoulder blades that keep the chest open. If we have strength there, you can, you can take your right arm, plop that hand on top of the left hand, and, and you'll notice that it's, it's very easy to hold that arm up if your sh shoulder is a little bit more uh, back. If it's forward, try that. You'll feel that that's, that's much more uncomfortable. It feels like you have to work a lot harder to lift up that weight, right? But if you, in general, have a posture where your chest is a little more open, imagine bringing your chest a little bit forward and up, just a little bit. You don't want this to affect your lower back. You want your lower back to remain long, but just a subtle energy from your upper back, moving your chest forward and up. Just, just that alone is, is enough. And then you'll notice you have much more strength. And uh, you can also try <laughs> moving the hand a little bit forward and back while you have some of that pressure and already. And, and also, if your shoulder's a little bit forward, that arm's gonna feel a lot more uncomfortable. If you have a good posture, that's gonna feel much better. So let's pick up the violin again. Make sure we feel that good posture. We'll practice shifting up and down like this until we hit the violin, the body of the violin with the hand. And let's, let's now talk about exactly how <laughs> to hold the violin with the left hand. We want to hold the violin with the base of the index finger and either the pad of the thumb or this last joint of the thumb. This will depend on how big your hand is or how well you stretch with the pinky. Uh, because for, for me, sometimes I can be here in first position, but if I play the pinky to get it high enough in tune, I, I usually have to be on the pad of the thumb. So, so this will depend on the person. Uh, the thumb will work a little bit less <clears throat> if you're on that last joint of the thumb. It'll work a little bit more if you're on the pad of the thumb. We should never play pressing the tip of the thumb into the violin because that will cause a bit of tension in the hand. It should always be into the pad or that last joint of the thumb. So we should have this structure in the hand and just that structure, that energy keeping the structure in our hand, just that structure is enough to keep the violin up without it falling all the way here. <laughs> so it's like we have this V and we don't want it, the violin to fall to the bottom of the V. Now once we have that, we can try both ways. We can try with it on the pad of the thumb and with it on that last strain of the thumb. Shifting up and down. Now, if we're more on the E string, we actually don't need the thumb very much. We could even go up and down almost without the thumb. And if we're on the G string, we'll be working the thumb a bit more. The thumb will be underneath the violin more. So you can also practice that, moving up and down more with the elbow more in front of you, like you're on the G string, or the elbow more to your left, like you're on the E string. You can see how that feels. And again, we, we shouldn't need much pressure from, from the neck. Then we'll place our other palm on top of the fingerboard, that black piece of wood, 
And then we'll do the same thing. So we'll feel how that feels with a little bit of weight in those strings. Because this is how it's going to feel when we're playing very loud, when we have a lot of arm weight in, into the string. To just see how that feels. And then what we want is as we're playing, that structure of the hand, and usually this will be energy with the thumb, will be countering our weight from the right arm. So as we put weight into the string, we feel that that hand and thumb and arm, all of that is, is going to take that, that pressure. And then these top four fingers will remain light. Whatever happens with our weight here, whatever, however much our thumb has to work, these top four fingers are going to stay uninvolved in that and will stay very light. And when we shift, we will need to make sure we have that contact with the base of the first finger. If we don't, the violin <laughs> will do that as we shift. <laughs> right? <laughs> it won't work very well. So we need, we need this contact on the right side of the instrument as we shift. What gets a little complicated is if we vibrate, we need to remove that contact of the base of the first finger. So if I'm vibrating here, might be able to vibrate with with it touching a little bit but uh, in general the vib the vibrato is is going to be able to open up a little bit more if we don't have the contact here so so in general playing without a shoulder rest we have to go back and forth with having that base of the first finger contact when we're vibrating we have that contact very light or no contact and then when we shift we just have enough contact so that the violin doesn't move <laughs> as we shift. We want the violin to stay as uh, stationary as possible as we're shifting. So this video was just a bit about the basics of how to play without uh, shoulder rest and I will also make other videos more in detail about different aspects of playing without a shoulder rest. So definitely I'll talk a little bit more about how to shift without a shoulder rest because that's definitely one of one of the bigger challenges. So there's a, there's a lot there's a lot to learn about that. And if if you have any more questions or any more requests about videos, uh, please let me know. Please subscribe for future videos about violin technique. Thank you for watching.